Hi, welcome to Unplugged with Araldo and Darren. We have some truly amazing guests on the show today. Join us a little later is the founder of Infinite Flow Dance Company to discuss wheelchair inclusion when dancing. And we have the CEO of Wigs.com who has pledged $100,000 to breastcancer.org to help educate and empower women with breast cancer. But first, we have actress, model, and dancer, Ana Lee, who's in the new Warner Brothers feature film, The Sun is Also a Star. True fact. Thank you so much for coming on the Hi, show, Anae. How are you? Hi. Thanks for being here. I think I can say it hands down. Cutest person that's Absolutely. ever come on the show. Hands down, no problem. You make us look terrible. Oh, yeah, at least so, me that. So <laughs> tell us about the moment that you found out you were going to get to play young Natasha on A Son is Also a Star. Me and my sister, we were going to a new opening for a new Levi store in New York City. Okay. Mm. And we were driving mm. back home. We decided, let's bathe our dog, Emerald. Um, right. Why not? Why not? Why not? It's the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> and after we finished bathing her, my mom pulled me aside, and I was like, Am I in trouble? I knew I didn't do anything, <laughs> but I started to get nervous. Fair. And then she calmed me down for a second, and she told me, you booked the role as young Natasha in The Sun is Also a Star. Whoa. At first, I didn't believe her. I was like, what? What? And then I finally realized, it's true. <laughs> and I just started jumping up, and I was screaming for joy. I was just so happy, because I just booked the role for Lifetime. Of course. What did your twin sister do? At first, we didn't tell her because we wanted to sign the contracts and everything. Right, make sure everything was legit. Okay. Yeah. Smart. <laughs> Smart. And so I was super happy, and she was like, why are you so happy? I was like, no reason. No reason. <laughs> <laughs> Played it cool. Yeah, I, I like, like it. That. And we had this one party. It was like a few like, weeks later when all the contracts were signed. Uh -huh. And my sister came up to me. She was like, Anae, you booked the Suns Also Star. I was like, I know. Yeah. And how Probably do you know? <laughs> I knew a few weeks ago, we were about. Right. She's like, why did you tell me? I was like, well, we wanted to sign the contracts first, but she was super, super happy for me. Of course. So you guys are really close then, right? You and yes. Mabel? We're so supportive of each other, and everything that we get, I'm so happy for her. If she gets a role, she's so of happy course. for me if I get a role. I love that. So Isn't that great? what was the time difference between when you actually tried out for Sun is Also a Star to when you found out that you got it? How, um, much, how much time had passed? I'm pretty sure it was a month. Oh, I'm okay. pretty sure because we had to do the audition, the callback, and then I finally right. got it, and I was on like hold too. I got the audition, and I it saw that you had to look like Yara Shahidi, and a lot of people always tell me I look a lot like her. Yeah. So I was like, this is perfect for me. I know this is amazing for me. <laughs> so I did a bunch of research, yeah. and I Great. found out that it was also based off of a book. So I read the book, and it gave me Excellent. a lot of information about my character. Wow. And at first in the script, one of my lines was, can you see in Jamaica too? And I was really confused at first. Hmm. But then I read the book, and my character is from Jamaica. And I ah. moved. And it just gave me so much more information that I needed. And my sister, she did a lot of research too. And then I got the call back, and I was so, so, so happy. And I just knew I had to put my 100 into this. Right. I was just so excited. Yeah. And then I got a hold for it. And it was just, um, it was just amazing. Did you get to meet your co-star then? Yes, I did. You did. How did was you, she? Yeah. Did you freak out? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you freaked out. <laughs> I knew you did. I watched Blackish and Grownish, and she stars in that show, and it was just so surreal seeing Yara in person. Uh huh. The first time I saw her, I was doing the fitting, so I had to go to the set to like confirm my outfit, and I saw her and Charles Melton there. Oh my god. Right? <laughs> You were like, You're speechless. Ooh. Yeah, I was trying to play cool, but inside play play I cool. was freaking out. <laughs> and I was talking to them, and Charles let me sit in his director's chair, and I was talking to Yara. He was just amazing. Amazing, right? Oh, I, I saw him a few it. other times on set, too. But I just remember that moment. It was like the best time ever. Mm. You know, you're 12 years old. We were talking about you're in sixth grade, right? right? Yes. How did your friends react when you got this role of a lifetime? Were they jealous? Were they supportive? They were super supportive of me. Oh, they were all real. That's awesome. so happy for me because my friends always support me on everything. In second grade, I remember practicing a script. Uh -huh. And I had the audition right after school. So during our little snack time, my friend helped me practice my script. And we went outside. And they're just so supportive of me. I love them. Right. So you and your sister, Mirabel, have started, like, you have a long history. I've watched your videos. I've watched yep. your website. Mm -hmm. So you guys started really young, yeah. right? How old were you when you first started your modeling? And um, I was three years old. Oh, my God. Three years old. 
what's like a I typical... I think I'm still in diapers at No, I, I'm yeah. still in diapers. So. What are you talking yeah, about? Right, yeah. uh, what is a typical day on set for you like? Is it a full eight hours? Is it longer than that? Um, it is a few hours. It's like a long time. Okay. Mm. So I would show up to set. I would sign in. I would check the schedule to make sure like I knew when I was filming. I would go to hair and makeup to get my touch-ups, my hair done. Of course. Uh, of course. Got to get and done. And I would get changed into my wardrobe. And I would just relax until I had to film. And then I'd finally film my scene, so, super, super fun. And <laughs> after I did that, I went to Crafty to get some snacks. Of course, you deserve yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah. so what's, what else is coming up? What else do you have going on with you and your sister? There are some things in the works right now. I can't say anything. Oh, OK. <laughs> Mom's the word. We tried. We Mom's tried. The word. We tried. Hey, we tried. <laughs> but you know, me and my sister are still going on auditions. Great. And mm. I just love acting. So every time I get an audition, I'm just so happy. Is there a part that you really want to play, whether or not it's now or in the future? What are you, what are you really um, hungry for? I think it'd be super cool to be on a comedy show. Yeah. I've always wanted to do that. And also, I've also, also always wanted to be in a horror film. I don't wow. really watch horror films. My mom makes me watch them with her because she loves them. <laughs> no, I normally oh get super scared. <laughs> but I think it'd be super, super cool to act in one. I, I just want to see what happens behind right? the camera. Of course. And like, how do they do that? How do they do that? So when is the movie coming out? The movie's coming out May 17th, and I'm so excited to watch it. All my friends are super excited. My entire family, they're wow. super pumped to see it. Are you going to get them free tickets? Of course. Nope. Yeah, right. <laughs> that was a test. That was a test. Anais, you are a joy to be with. Yeah, your future is bright. God bless you. Thank you so and much all the for best coming to you. on. And come by again, okay? Yes. All right. Still to come, we have the founder of Infinite Flow Dance Company to discuss the importance of inclusion. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Joining us via Skype from Los Angeles is Marissa Hamamota, the founder, artistic director, and CEO of Infinite Flow, an inclusive dance company. Marissa is a stroke survivor and inclusion keynote speaker. She has been featured on national media outlets around the country and performed at Apple's Steve Jobs Theater. In addition, Infinite Flow's dance videos have been viewed by 50 million people. We are grateful to have you on this show today, Marissa. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, no, thank Thanks you. Thanks for being here. So we have a lot to talk about. Let's begin with you, with your story. Tell us about your story a little bit for our viewers. Sure. So I've been a dancer my whole life, but during college, I had a stroke in the spinal cord that paralyzed me from the neck down. Mm. And um, I'm actually back standing and standing and dancing now, but being a stroke survivor led me to creating infinite flow and advocating for disability rights. Mm. Wow, I mean, that's incredible. What is, what is infinite flow's vision? Where do you see it going and, and what do you hope for it? So infinite flow's mission is to make dance accessible to all and to use dance to inspire inclusivity. And my vision is creating a world where people accept each other's differences and people with disabilities are not stigmatized and are have equal access to daily life. Mm. So when, when did you start Infinite Flow? I started Infinite Flow in 2015. Okay. And at that time, I was a kind of a struggling dancer in Hollywood, to kind of sum it up. I was in the middle of just auditioning for a lot of different things, not really landing any roles. And I started to ask myself, there's got to be more to dance than this. I, I finally have achieved my, my dream to dance professionally, but where am I really headed here? And that was when I accidentally discovered wheelchair dancing and saw how underdeveloped it was. I also learned that one in five people have a disability, yet you rarely see dancers with disabilities right. in dance class or anywhere. And some... Somehow that led that made me go. You know what? It must be my destiny to do something about this. Mm. Wow, that is incredible. <laughs> yeah. What is your plan to bring Infinite Flow to schools and to children? You know, globally. Yeah. So we have performed over a hundred times, and out of a hundred times, 
one of the places that we absolutely love performing at is school assemblies. But even though over, over 30 schools have actually contacted me requesting school assemblies, but only three have been able to afford them. And I, it, it just broke my heart to continually decline these, these emails. And I said, you know what, that's it. I'm gonna make it a goal to get 100 school assemblies sponsored for the 2019-2020 school year. So we're kind of at the very beginning of that whole campaign, but next Monday we will be going into two schools uh, to put on school assemblies and shoot some video. And I truly believe that educating the next generation about celebrating difference, creatively collaborating with each other, and embracing um, resilience um, is the way to go for this next generation. So I'm really, really excited to dive in into this project. Why um, is inclusion now more important than ever before? Um, you know, America is a melting pot. And I also feel like, just in general, um, I, I feel like politically we've been very divided. And um, it's we're kind of living in a time in which I feel like we this country is polarized in many, many, many different ways. And um, but yet I still believe that at the core we are all, all human beings, that we all have we all share the common wants and needs and emotions and desires. And we can still connect even if we don't believe in the same things, uh, whether it's politically or religiously or um, even just daily life, um, do you like peanut butter or do you like celery? You know, like I, I think that there's a way to find commonality between each other. And I truly believe that human beings are creatures that were meant to collaborate creatively with each other. So that's another. Well, well, well said, Marissa. Well I'm a peanut butter lover fan. I know you were <laughs> so wondering. And I, uh, we're, yeah. So we're teaming we're up teaming here. Up here. Uh, before we let you go, where can people find more about Infinite Flow? Sure. So you can find us at infiniteflowdance.org or follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Infinite Flow Dance. And yes, we would love to. We would love to really put on a hundred school, hundred sponsored. School assemblies for the school year. And if you are a school that would love to have us, please do contact us as well. Oh, beautiful. All right. Thank you, Marissa, for being on the show. We appreciate it. Good luck with everything. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. Still to come, we have a top tailor to stars and professional athletes. We will be chatting with renowned designer Victor Moen about some of the latest trends in men's fashion. Welcome back. Joining us is Victor Mohan, CEO of Mohan's Custom Tailor. As someone who covers a lot of red carpets and award shows, I can certainly tell when someone is wearing a fabulous custom tailored suit. And I was fortunate to have received a custom fitted suit from Victor. And it's truly amazing. Thank you for coming on the show, Victor. It's a pleasure to have you, man. I thank you for having me. I thank you for having me. You yes. look amazing. Dapper, I look terrible. As always, yes. dapper, thank my you. friend. To, as you can see, I have to dress the part. <laughs> yeah. So let's exactly. begin with Mohan. How did it all start with you and your father? Well, it's it, it all started with my dad, you mm -hmm. know, um, cause I, because I came later on in the picture in 1978. But in 1972 okay. is when he when he um, actually started like the business. Okay. And um, it was really hard at first, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, when you're creating a business out of absolutely nothing, you yeah. know, it's, it's hard. Sure. It turns out that uh, like the spark he needed happened as soon as I was born. Um, like the nurse in the hospital yeah. was the best friend of Patrick Ewing's mother. Wow. Mm. Mm. So that was the connection, that was the right? Connection. Yeah. That was the connection, and it was a spark, like my father needed, like the right. company needed, and uh, so then we made, uh, he made, like the draft suit of Patrick Ewing. 
He was like the talk of New York. Of course. He was like the of king course, of New York. Still the talk of still New York. The <laughs> Knicks were after that one superstar franchise player, right. and we landed Patrick. Amazing, That's right? right? Amazing. And amazing, we amazing. made his draft suit, right? So um, then after that, they actually they actually made a deal, and Mr. Mr. Ewing said, mm. I'll gladly be in your advertisements because I love your work. Right. Well, I gotta say, it looks like we have a third co-host here. Right? This is yes. Manny, right? This is, this is Manny. Manny. Right? Tell this us, is my good friend, Manny. Tell us about Manny and okay. why is it important to have a good custom tailored suit? Okay, well, first of all, he, he actually shows why. Um, I usually point out this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I do is because you see how this is hand stitched. Yes. yes. The whole collar, like uh, so. You have uh, you have the inside, which is the lining. Right. You have the outside, which is the fabric. Right. And in the middle is the interlining. Okay. All right. Now the interlining is very important because it keeps the shape mm -hmm. of the suit. Okay. Interesting. It keeps yeah. the shape of the suit. All right. Now, um, ninety-five percent of Unfortunately, 95% of the stuff that you get outside, off the right. rack. Off the rack, right. And even tailors as well are doing this now because it's a dirt cheap way, right. is um, they're gluing or fusing this, like the interlining. Instead of hand stitching. All right, right. Yeah. exactly. Instead of hand stitching hmm. because it's a dirt cheap way to make it and they make it like that on purpose right. so that you throw it out after like a year or two. Right. And then right. you have to buy another one and you have to buy another one. Right. Because we hand stitch, our suits are made to last at least nine to 12 years wow. easy. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. I just noticed that your suit says Mohan <laughs> yes. on the pin. Yes. 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 I was staring yes. at yes. it, yes. and you yes. have, you flashed the lining. Did I, I see did. Arnold I did. Schwarzenegger yes. on the yes. lining? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Arnold Schwarzenegger is right here. Are you a body, I mean, you look buff, but. Yeah, you know, I, okay. was, right. I was a bodybuilder. Wow. Right. But then, um, but my real passion was Mohans. Right. Was Mohans. But okay. uh, me growing up, I was all yes. confused. Oh, yeah, you know, I love bodybuilding, right. but then what about the company? I love bodybuilding, but. Right. Well, I, so I'm going to take a chance to really stand up because I really want to yeah, show you. Yeah, please do. Say, I, this is great. really amazing, you. guys. You really have to take out this look here. Yes. So I'm buttoning up right here. Please, Vector, tell us what some of the. Um, all right. So um, a few of the details that you see is, first of all, perfect fit. Perfect shape on his body. You see how the back sways because it sways with him because he's because his lower back sways a little bit. So the suit fits like a glove. You look amazing. Mm. Uh, hand stitching on the edges of the lapels. Hand stitching on the flaps. Real working buttonholes. And the rule of thumb, it's like a bespoke rule, is to leave the last one undone. To show that you have that. Wow. Yes. So there you go. And uh, especially on, on a suit like this, extremely immaculate, by the way, mm -hmm. if you can turn around this way, sure. we can also di display a third pocket here, mm -hmm. which is called a ticket pocket. They used this in the olden days um, in the theater. That's right. Right? In the theater. That's right. Yes. The theater. You That's have to right. say it like that the when theater, you... The theater, you have to say it that the way. Theater. <laughs> the, the, the theater. The theater. Yeah, the theater. The theater. <laughs> I never okay. noticed the buttonhole. I mean, I, I never knew that a bespoke rule was to have one undone, I that, feel, that in the and know. Also, and then also, did you know that every time you stand up, you button. That's right. You sit down. You sit down, you unbutton. You unbutton. That's yeah. right. That's Absolutely. also a, a bespoke rule. So your, your store, where is it located, first of all? We are conveniently located across the street from Grand Central uh -huh. on the Madison Avenue side, 301 okay. and the Madison Avenue. Mm -hmm. We're on the third floor. The entire floor is ours. And uh, it's a no-brainer. You should try us out. So real quickly, how long does it take a, to, to get a suit made Good real question. quickly? All right, anywhere from four to six weeks. Okay. okay. We can expedite at no charge mm -hmm. anywhere from two to three weeks. Right. 
Wow, I am Isn't going to stop by immediately <laughs> if I can look half as good as Araldo. Thank My you friend. so much for being here. Thank you, you so are, much. You, I appreciate you. Are it. You are a good looking My guy. Pleasure and, I'm, and, and it was an honor for me to meet you and <laughs> so you know, an honor to, to come have here. you here. Yes, really. yes. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Yes. Okay, guys, when we return, we have the CEO and co founder of Wix.com to discuss how teaming up with breastcancer.org will truly make a difference in the breast cancer community. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We are back. Joining us via Skype from Dallas, Texas is Carlise Sotelo Moore, the CEO and co-founder of Wigs.com. Wigs.com has been the wig expert for more than 20 years, helping people feel confident, beautiful, and empowered to face the world. Recently, Wigs.com joined together in a three-year partnership with breastcancer.org. The partnership is worth over $100,000 in donations and will help educate and empower women with breast cancer. Thank you so much for joining us, Carly. You're Hi, doing Carly, amazing work. You? <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. So how will teaming up with breastcancer.org really change you know, the look and face of breast cancer? Well, we're just hoping to bring awareness and, of course, help any way we can with the donations. We have a amazing client base that is willing to help, and thankfully, we were able to partner with them for three years. So hopefully, we'll just be able to point to and just keep awareness. Hopefully, we will find some kind of a cure or, if nothing else, help along the way in all different aspects of, of these women's journeys. So Carly, uh, let's go back a little bit. How did you come up with the idea of wigs.com? Who gave you the idea? Was it your idea? How did the whole, uh, the whole process came about? So many moons ago, we <laughs> wanted to um, really address, th this was is very much a niche market. And for women looking for wigs, you can't just go to the grocery store, to the department store, right. um, and, like you can lipstick or shoes, what have you. It's not as easy. And Wigs is a very person in, in many cases, a lot of us do it just for fun, but in many cases it's a a personal issue that you're you don't want to go to a department store and try on wigs. There aren't any there, by the way, but if there were, it it'd be it's a personal purchase. And so we wanted to allow the client to have something more than just an online catalog where they just look through pictures. So we give education, videos, uh, all angles of the photos so that the client can feel like she's kind of there in a store and, and looking online in a way that is most helpful to get the right choice. It's a, it's a intimate purchase. What are some of the newer styles and trends and wigs that you've been seeing that uh, we can look out for? Colors are very, and when I say colors, I mean cool, like pinks and lavenders and blues. Mm. Um, what, be it full color or just having the colors highlighted in, that's really trendy right now. Um, of course, straight, beautiful, sleek hair is always in, and it's hard for us to get that naturally. So wigs provide that perfect hairdo all the time, so that makes life easy. So uh, I understand that not only do women get wigs, but men also. And you, you, have you seen an increase in men requesting specific types of wigs, or what have you seen? So men do wear wigs, not to the same degree as women, because, I mean, let's face it, it's kind of cool for a man to be bald. I mean, they, they can rock it. We <laughs> are not as confident doing that. Mm -hmm. So just by way of our natures, uh, it's predominantly women, but men wear wigs and there are some great ones out there. And especially as men get a little older, they want their, their, that old mane that they used to have. <laughs> right. and the wigs are, there's some great ones. The, the technology across the board is just so much better now with the, the lace front that gives you a very natural hairline. Mm. Um, the monofilament, which kind of it looks it's sewn in so it looks like it's growing straight out of your hair your head wow it's just supernatural it's very difficult to tell if you have a good wig on it's very difficult to tell that you have a wig on mm. i think that's great that it's so difficult to tell right. what are some of your favorite styles uh if you were going to put on a wig or what what do you like to see on people the most i do wear wigs a lot so oh, on my um 
not so clean hair days or <laughs> the hairdresser to get my natural highlights covered. Um, I, I do wigs often, um, probably I would say easy once a week for sure. Um, my favorite is to be, because I'm not, um, is to be redhead. I love red hair. Ooh. It's beautiful. And it's, if you don't have it naturally, it's very hard to maintain, um, by going to the hairdresser and getting it dyed because the vibrancy is very hard to maintain. So I love being a redhead. Just anything opposite of what I have is fun. The little short bobs and it's just fun to, I kind of see it like shoes. Um, you just, I, I'll look at an outfit and go, Ooh, that'd be good with a blonde wig. <laughs> so it's just fun. They're, they're really fun. And, and a lot of people, a lot of women think, Oh, I have to wear one, but the truth is you get to wear one and understandably sometimes it's not the best circumstance, but it's really fun if you, if you play with it and explore different colors or styles. Hmm. Well, I, we are actually out of time, but you know, I wanted to thank you so much for being on the show thank you. and for giving us some, some valuable information for us. Really do. Appreciate it. You're doing All right. Good thank work. you, Carlise. Thank okay. You, bye. Okay, guys, thank you, Carlise, for joining us. And thanks again to all of our guests. And thanks to all of you home for watching. And remember, let's continue our conversation on social media. We look forward to hearing from you. Be sure to share with us topics and guests you would like to see on the show. Have a great weekend. Sponsored by...